Hello all, Rick here looking at the Tacong Empire and what we know of it. While I already made a video on them, this was several years old now and we have a bit more lore on them to look into. There will be spoilers for Star Trek Resurgence in this video, as that game is considered apocryphal, most of the lore I draw on the Tacon is not considered canon, as they only really have the one episode and one reference outside of that. In its time, the Tacon Empire was known as the Empire of Endless Flame, and began as most civilizations as a simple and primitive society on a home planet in the heart of what would be their empire. In the 24th century, the Vulcans would name this planet Eremar in the Taurus Reach, which would only be cursorily scanned with probes. It's unlikely that this was even recognised as the homeworld of the Tacon unless it's thoroughly investigated. In the Devil's Heart novel, which is the second time I've mentioned this in an Ancient Civilizations video, it is cited that the arrival of this library of information arrived on their home planet and it led to the formation of their interstellar society as they reverse engineered the information within. Whether or not this is true is mostly irrelevant however as their empire ended up spanning thousands of years, possibly hundreds of thousands. 600,000 years ago, their empire reached spacefaring heights and began to expand across large swaths of the galaxy, mostly the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. It assimilated other cultures into its empire, although at this early time in the galaxy, few others existed that could rival them in power. Therefore, many of these species that they came to know were pre-warp, often pre-industrial, and the Tacon simply watched over them, neither interfering nor avoiding them completely. Those species who did come to know of the Tacon ended up viewing them as godlike beings, so advanced was their technology. At its height, it covered pretty much the entirety of what would become the United Federation of Planets area, as well as Romulan, Cardassian, Gorn, Tholian, and half of the Klingons' space. Their uncontested reach assured them as the dominant species in the galaxy. They reached out to neighbouring powers, such as the Organians, who pretty much isolated themselves from the greater galaxy, but it is unknown if the Tacon interacted with the Preservers or ancient humanoids. That's highly likely, however. They also had skirmished with the Shaddai. They were shown using technology far beyond the Federation's level. They had mastered terraforming aeons ago and since moved on to bigger scale projects. However, they did convert many terrestrial planets they found into habitable M-class biomes, perhaps leading to many such worlds still in existence thanks to their efforts, which is an interesting idea. Anyway, creating such habitable planets saw them create installations and outposts on many of them, often not establishing a large society on them, usually just a colony or two, nothing more, a single facility. What was more incredible though was that they moved on from reforming planets to forging entire solar systems. They were star shapers by the height of their power and could drag entire stars into new locations, creating solar systems around them or simply bringing that solar system along for the ride. Their primary method of travel was unknown, although they certainly were not unfamiliar with the warp drive. It could be simply that with no contemporary societies to observe them, the Tacon did rely on something as identifiable as warp, but it was not recognised by the relatively unadvanced neighbours. Either way, they could simply teleport around vast distances if needed, apparently with no visible effects, suggesting some form of space folding drive, or something beyond even this, closer to the casual manipulations of the Q. The Tacon technology was encased in crystalline formations of programmable matter that could be generated on any surface or within any system. It emitted strong tetrametric radiation, which was harmless at low levels. As a security measure, only Tacon biosignatures could operate their devices and inputs, preventing the contamination of other cultures or their theft. It responded to the user's physical inputs, but also will seemingly being in tune with the mind of the user. These crystals encased much of their structures and ships, with entire systems being grown out of the programmed formations. 
Incredibly high levels of energy were transferred through cartabulars, levels that far exceeded those harnessed by even a hundred warp cores. In terms of defence, their systems employed primarily an energy draining field that was able to simply hold ships stationary and mitigate any resistance. They could also manipulate space-time to prevent warp. Their energy weapons themselves were rather powerful, and would often deliver programmable crystals upon impact too, which would then have the secondary effect of attempting to infiltrate and sabotage a target's systems, even usurping control of them if possible. On an individual level, the Tukon would use firearms that also delivered crystalline matter in a similar fashion, causing the target to crystallise if struck. However, there were also certain technologies that would operate in tandem with the user, shaping themselves to their use, either as projectiles, energy weapons, shielding, and much more. One more interesting technology was their ability to store a replica of an individual's mind in a crystalline data storage system. This not only held the mind of the Tacon individual, but would also radically alter the DNA of the injected host to that of a Tacon, effectively overriding the mind and potentially the form of the host. Such devices were created as backups for individuals who may suffer irreparable damage, so that in a last effort they could be transferred to a new body. Among their society were the portals. These were positions of incredible power, and an individual underwent a long training and selection process to become such an individual. They were intensely merged with Tacon technology, and could draw on nearby Taconian energy sources to fuel their abilities, controlling and interfacing with them at will. Such a portal was also known as a Guardian of the Tacon, and carried a staff of office adorned with the ceremonial flame of their empire. Such a being ended up with a near-immortal lifespan and was stationed at a portal planet to watch over some aspect of the Tacon Empire, an eternal sentinel on an isolated guard post, often watching the borders of their territory. It's not all bad, however, as these portals could enter a period of slumber, so to pass the decades. By the time of Star Trek, only one such portal was discovered in the system of Delphi Ardu, although who knows, there may be others out there. So long lived was their civilization that they began to ascribe ages to their timeline. The ages of Batsu and Simi came before the most known events of the Tukon, although it's unclear if they were the first. The age of Zora saw the Tukon Empress instigate a great endeavour, a scientific program that became the centre of their society for that age, culminating in the development of the ability to reshape entire solar systems and to relocate stars. Following this was the Age of Makto, which saw the Tukon actually come into conflict, of a sort, with the Q Continuum. Now by conflict, I mean that the Q wanted to test the Tukon, and began throwing catastrophes into their face to see how they would resolve them. This seems on brand for the Q, but the Tukon weathered the storm of events and even their own civil war. However, it was in this age that their empire would collapse, with the destruction of their home star before they managed to replace it with another. One faction within the Empire of Endless Flame saw this coming doom, and instead decided to abuse the aforementioned Tukon memory devices to preserve beyond the end of their civilization and override sentient beings in the future to reform their own version of the Empire. These called themselves the Scions of the Flame, but were ultimately unsuccessful despite taking over a large number of Starfleet, Hotari, and Elidians. Now, supernovas take a very, very long time to occur, and this was one they saw coming, so what led to the devastation being so sudden? We have seen this with the Romulans recently in Star Trek, and that mystery is still unanswered, but being tantalised frequently. Maybe I'll do a video on those theories. But as for the Tukon, in canon, we have no explanations, only hints. Although Apocrypha covers some potential events. One is that an entity known as Zero detonated it prematurely. Another record is that their war with the Shaddai race culminated in this species deploying weapons into the stars of the Tukon Empire, destroying them as acts of war. 
The final theory is the one hinted at in canon, although only confirmed outside of the shows. This is that the Takon's own artificial intelligences eventually turned on their creators. Somehow, they accelerated the supernova in an attack which destabilised the Empire before spending the next couple of ages hunting their former masters. It was at this time that the planet of Delphi Ardu and Portal 63 lost contact with the Greater Empire. The following ages of Orzari and Fendor go to show that some Takon remnants must have survived to keep records, and perhaps these ages persisted until there were none left to record them. This was around 300,000 years ago, meaning that the fall of the Takon was sudden but then protracted for 300 millennia until almost all traces of them were extinguished. Then, the artificial lifeforms used the Takon's own technology to draw in eight stars, creating the Milky Way's only discovered octonary star system, placing the Aya planet at its centre in an act of incredible stellar dynamics. There, they placed the Admonition, a psychic message meant for artificial minds that contained plans for a beacon to contact them. They then retreated into another dimension, leaving this one altogether, only to return if that beacon was activated, where they would destroy any organic life and rescue any artificial ones in need of escape. The Takon Empire eventually fades into mythology, and even beyond into non-existence for many. So long ago and complete was their eradication. Now that Starfleet knows of their existence, they know what to look for, and more discoveries about them are being made as their former territory is mapped and a bigger picture of their time unfolds. The Empire of Eternal Flame spanned an incomparable length of time, but developments were slow, considering other species reached ascendancy in that lifetime. However, it is undeniable that they literally shaped the galaxy in which future civilizations would evolve, with their embers filtering down through the ages. Maybe they'll make a reappearance in canon. Star Trek Resurgence certainly added a lot to their lore, so I guess we'll see. So come on, classic nerd topic. Who would win in a fight between the Iconians and the Tacon? I'll see you later, and thanks again. I've been Rick, and goodbye.